what is good we got me and your boy austin abbott back at it like a crack addict let's do it we're gonna talk some rookies today got a little rookie report for you austin what's good man what's good man how are you doing casey I'm doing great, man. We're into week three. Got a bunch of good fantasy wins this week. Everything but your fade consensus league lost lost by a point. Dude, I got smoked too. This was a tough mm-hmm. week. I it's early, man. It's early. It's gonna be a long season, but uh it is. Yeah, man. I'm 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 ready to talk about the twenty twenty five rookies if you want to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're doing it, baby. We got one out. Me and you got one out. I got yeah. one out. We're hitting them twenty five rookies. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment below, five star review, subscribe on all platforms. Let's get it. All right, let's talk about some rookies. Um, some have started real hot, others have not. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of the top dogs in this uh, rookie report here. I think we should start off with Jaden Daniels, the man who played last night, had an excellent game. I believe you had maybe Jaden Daniels up a tier higher than. Did you have four guys in your top tier? In my initial rankings, he was tier two, I believe. Okay, okay. Um, I think he was the top of tier two. Yeah, okay. So we were about the same on that. Uh, but what was what's your Im- thoughts on initial Jaden Daniels right now? How excited are you moving forward? Are you tempering expectations? Are are you are you like just elated over the moon? Give me your first three weeks overview on Jaden uh, Daniels here, Austin. Yeah, I mean, first thing that comes to mind, of course, is stock up, man. I mean, he's looked the part. If you sit down and watch the games, especially last night, I mean, holy cow. He he looks like he could have been the, and I'm not overreacting, like he looks like he could have been the first overall pick and it would have, you know, you could justify that, like just based mm-hmm. off of the film, based off the production. Um, I mean, Washington is fun, man. It's a new era. They have life. Casey, I saw this stat from uh, NFL on CBS on Twitter. This is this is insane, and and I'll be quick. Games where a team has scored on every drive, this excludes kneel downs. Jaden Daniels has two of those games in his three starts already. Mm -hmm. Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, uh, Drew Brees, and Patrick Mahomes in a thousand and ninety four starts combined have two of those. I'm look. It's you could say it's cherry pick. You could say what you want. Jaden Daniels is putting up points consistently, man. They, yeah. they, he, he just like outdueled Joe Burrow straight up. I just genuinely thought he was the better quarterback last night. He looks awesome, man. So I'm, I'm, I really am a believer. He's exceeding my expectations. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think for most everybody, you got to look at it. You know, exceeding expectations. Every, everybody had him pretty high. I don't think anybody was like terribly low on him. My only concerns were, you know potential the team around him being a little slow to start and then you know can can he operate and function the offense and and we'll see but you know sometimes being the older statesman quarterback with five years of playing gets hold, held against you i think in this case it's very much helping Jaden daniels the human being in Jaden daniels everyone has, was was saying how stoic he was how calm he was his demeanor is great and i think that's you know the, the more and more we do this, the more and more we've talked about this, the more and more we've talked about it is like, that's just something that, you know, is very hard to quantify in the process. But the more and more you hear about the good parts of it, it's like those are just plus, plus, plus. And the guys that are going to come in there and work hard and not not think that anything's going to be handed to them and, and all intents and purposes moving in to this season, Jaden Daniels was getting good reports. And then through these first three weeks, all through training camp was getting those kind of reports of just, you know, there's not... There's no cockiness to this guy. There's no he he expects it like he's going out there earning and learning. And the first couple of first two games, you saw, you know, quite a bit of, you know, him running, which was to be expected. That's what you like. That's what you knew the floor was going to be good. But you, you there weren't a whole lot of completions really past the line of scrimmage or past five yards. Right. But which was fine. You're getting it done. You're a rookie. You're figuring it out. But this game, you finally saw Terry getting involved some some good deep down the field passing uh, from from Jaden Daniels and what you want to see year week over week is evolution and and learning and figuring things out uh, and I think I think that's what you saw here from Jaden Daniels that was it was a great performance last night by him and you know he really hasn't been bad at all through the first three games I think because it was so good and that game was in prime time and it was a good performance we talk about this all the time it gets even exacerbated to how awesome this guy could be so i want to be careful of that and we're only three games in of crowning him being awesome like just the best ever and i'm not saying that he's not very good and i'm not saying i don't love him and i'm not saying 
he's a great fantasy quarterback right now. But we got to do we do have to temper expectations just a hair. All about you know be the the bummer in the room of mm-hmm. because it was on prime time. If it's a one o'clock game, I don't know that you see as much love for Jaden Daniels as you are right this minute. So those primetime games can make or break you. Caleb had one, and it didn't go the way you wanted it to go. You know, there's a lot of pressure. Aaron throws here and there. And so, you know, it didn't make Caleb a household name. We'll, we'll talk about Caleb next. Let's let's keep it on Jaden. But I, I think that was huge in, you know, the value of Jaden Daniel from a fantasy perspective, because that's what we were a fantasy show. So that's kind of what we're talking about. So how far has, has Jaden Daniels, uh, you know, he was already was kind of a second round-ish pick. W- is there any, like, OG stalwart kind of quarterback here uh, that you would take that Jaden Daniels has uh, supplanted at this point for you, Austin. Uh, just in dynasty rankings and in general, like who has Jaden Daniels surpassed? Is is that the question, Casey? Sort of, yeah. I mean, would you rather have is is he over Kyler Murray already for you? So I'm gonna like dodge a question a little bit. I, I really fine. I'm ready to to jump the gun already. I if I had a draft today, Casey, I'm dead serious for fantasy purposes. Fantasy purposes. I'm mm-hmm. taking Jaden Daniels over Caleb Williams. I'm mm-hmm. I, I feel like I can say that confidently. Now, if I look back in a year and we prefer Caleb, it you know, would not shock me, wouldn't blow blow me away. Uh, I just feel after three weeks, I, you know, I have I've seen enough and and it's early, but I think Jaden Daniels Obviously, Heisman winner. I mean, he was a beast at LSU. You know, it's not like he was just some type of like Will Levis type of prospect. He was, and I don't mean to throw shade at Will Levis, but brother needs to pick it up. Regardless, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, man. Will Levis is he, Will Levis has some of the best content in the world. If you see like those pictures of him every single week, uh, you know what I'm talking about. But mm-hmm. re- regardless, um, Jane Daniels was a phenomenal prospect coming out, man. And he's just looking the part again, exceeding expectations. Um, but but as far as other quarterbacks, Casey, that he could surpass, I mean Lamar. I, I, I think that no, I, I don't want to put him past Lamar quite yet. I think like Anthony Richardson is is someone that, you know, I think it's definitely a conversation. You know, Richardson is struggled heavily. And I know he's not a veteran, right? He's only in year two. He really has only played like yeah. five games, but um well, God, other you know, other guys you, that are in that range. Um, when you make like, the comparison of those two and their career, like Jaden Daniels has played five years of college football. I think right. Anthony Richardson has played like 19 <laughs> games from high school to now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so like I said in the beginning of that rant, sometimes it gets held against guys for being there for so long and being productive in that last year, which is, you know, you got to look at it and question it a little bit, but you also have to talk about some of the context around it and the, and the hows and whys. At this point, I think I think it's fair to say that swapping Jaden Daniels for Anthony Richardson, I think almost anybody would pretty much do that right now. Yeah, no, it feels like that too. And like he's he's obviously at this point surpassed guys like I'm just gonna throw out a few names real quick. You know, whether it's Jared Goff, Trevor Lawrence, Brock Purdy, Dak Prescott. Like, yes, Jaden Daniels, candidly above all of those guys. I think the conversation is more of in that like Jordan Love range. Like, mm. like. Okay, I think that's an interesting question. Uh, Kyler I Murray. think the, I, yes, I think the world of Jordan Love. I think he is a a monster. I think he's the truth. Uh, so I think that's a legitimate question. But yeah, Kyler Murray. What about Joe Burrow? Uh, you know, is is I think consensus may have. I'm gonna. You know, I'm still hanging on to Burrow there for me. Uh, yeah, you're going Burrow over Daniels. There's, I've I just th- seen I him go Daniels. Op- I've seen him operate at just a really, really high level. And, and you mm-hmm. know, it's not working out for the Bengals right now. Joe's coming back from a wrist injury. Last night, his fantasy production was very good. The, the week before, fantasy production oh, yeah. was really good. I've, I've just, he's a guy who can navigate all the way to the, the precipice of football for, your, for his team. And we've seen him be there and get there. And I know, you know, it's not everything, but I just believe in Joe Burrows. Now, if it's, you know, if it's four point of passing touchdown, then I'm probably going with the legs, right? I give the legs more bonus than the four point passing touchdown instead of the six in the six. I know Burrow can get it done and deliver yeah. a bunch of touchdown passes uh, in there. And I mean, Jaden Daniels is QB two right now. We're, we're through three weeks and the legs have been propping them up huge, but they're, that's they were always going to prop them up huge, right? And then last guy to make a comparison or, or where we'll go back and forth on before we pivot. Cause I know we probably want to, you know, move on to the next guy. Uh, yeah. J- Jaden Daniels or CJ Stroud. Is that a conversation to be had? I'm pro I'm sticking with Stroud at this. Stroud. Point. Yep. 
No, he's just the next guy on the list. So I figured I would mention mention him. So um, you want to yeah. pivot over to yeah. Caleb, Caleb, Caleb Williams? Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. Let's go to Caleb. Um, and I'll let you grab the floor for a second because you were kind of saying uh, before we started that the, the Colts game, which you're a Colts fan and you watch that game and, and they're, Richardson and Caleb were bad. And I, I would disagree on the Caleb side of things. So I'll let you go first and give me your Caleb through three games here. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I watched the entire game and mm-hmm. uh, it was brutal, man. I mean, if it like Caleb Williams, you look at the stat line at the end and you're like, okay, 363 yards, like that's very good. It's like, well, they were trailing for the majority of the game. A lot of it was... Through it 52 times. Right, right, 52 times. A lot of it was garbage time. You know, Colts are just playing prevent, you know, giving up a lot from underneath and, you know, that that they ended up winning the game obviously so it all worked out but you know if anything i was mostly impressed by roma dunze this this week f- you know for the bears uh, mm-hmm. but back to caleb we're only 3 games in i'm not worried i'm not panicking i thought it would be better but it, it is what it is. You know, it's, you know, it, it, it was inevitable, Casey, that these rookies were going to make mistakes, right? Mm-hmm. It was, it was inevitable that they were going to struggle. Now, if this continues to linger on for, let's just say into week 10. Okay. Like then I'll be at a point where I'm like, you know what? I'm legitimately concerned or worried at, le- at least at a higher degree than I am right now. So would yeah. would you mostly agree with that? Like, like, I just think we need to have a, a much longer leash. Before yeah. Oh, we, for sure. We, I mean, there is before we it, react to these things. I'm I'm completely the opposite with Caleb Williams. I think mm-hmm. from we I've watched every I, I tune into the Bears games every week. I tune into the Anthony Richardson. I tune into these quarterbacks. They're they're they get a screen every week. You know the, the yep, quarterbacks yep. that I'm trying to follow and see. You know Caleb, Jaden, Jaden Daniels, uh, Anthony Richardson. The ones that we don't know and we have some questions on, but we we really love them and they're highly valued. So I got those are the guys that get a screen every week. It's just so happened those two were playing each other this week. I think from week to week to week, you've seen massive improvements from Caleb Williams from week one to week two to week three. Um, you've just seen so many different areas of the field of him growing and understanding. And that's really all I want to see. Um, and, you know, he's when he first of all, he has been under an insane oh. amount of oh, pressure yeah. and duress. Yeah. Um, you know, and brutal. Jaden Daniels has the legs to stand on. Caleb has the scrambling ability, but not like the, he, he's not going to take off and run a ton. Uh, he's going to, he's going to try to move around and, and make the throw still the throws the, the are all there. It's all happening. You see the wow shit come from Caleb. And then you see a, a few things that are off here and there, but each week it's improving. He's, he's starting to figure out how to maneuver, how to, he's, he's, he's checking stuff. He's making the right reads. He's growing. Uh, so that's, I'm not worried at all. The only thing that what what we did think would be better from the Bears, and which at least I did, is I thought that offensive line was improving, and it seems mm-hmm. to be going kind of the opposite way for me, um, which I don't love. And and they can't get a running game going, and that's that's such a but. Like the the Commanders are have been able to with Jaden Daniels, Brian Robinson has been good, Eckler's been you know able to contribute, and then Jaden Daniels, so they're able to to kind of run the ball. The the Bears have been forced to be one-dimensional through pretty much every single game. Now, they do have the benefit of having a good defense, uh, but I'm not worried at all about Caleb Williams. I, I think I think it's coming. I think he looks looks the part. He's just not putting up the fantasy points that Jaden Daniels is. And like I said, we saw one guy in primetime. He didn't, he didn't win the game. He wasn't spectacular. We saw another guy in primetime be spectacular and win the game. So... I'm 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 not anywhere near like I'm still very much so having Caleb way up there in my rookie rankings. I wouldn't be I'm not really feeling huge moves either way. I love both of those guys, you know, a decent amount. I had Caleb a tier above Jaden Reed or uh, Jaden Daniels rather. Mm-hmm. I think you you pretty much have to take the tier break out of there for me at this point. You would have to have, you know, a bigger tier 1 of neighbors and Marv and Caleb and Jaden Daniels all all in there together at this point for me. Man, I, I'll tell you what, like every Sunday rolls around, 
I can't wait to watch him play, though. I, I know it's yeah. been tough. I know it's been relatively ugly. Like, I can't wait to watch the Bears play. Like, they're exciting. I think it's good content. They're fun. Uh, and, and I know they're young, man. I know they're going to get better. And and you nailed it, Casey. Like, they are the epitome of one-dimensional, man. That line, that run game. Uh, boy, I thought DeAndre Swift, and again, it's early. I thought DeAndre Swift would be a lot better than than what we've seen. But it's a long season, man. It takes a while for some of these things to mesh, especially when you neglect the preseason, like a lot of the starters, you know, have been. So um, you want to uh, want to pivot over to an, to another player? Where do you want to go from here? Uh, yeah, well, let's let's just real quick touch on on, you know, where where would you have Caleb is Caleb Williams basically kind of staying neutral for you as far as in an overall dynasty setting for the quarterbacks? Because I think he is for me. I'm not ready to go anywhere with him. Yeah, uh, the old, literally the only thing I would change, I, and you could say it's a big thing, I have Jaden Daniels a hair above him right now in my rankings. I'm not they're, about it. They're, they're in the same tier. It's, I will not be surprised if I flip-flopped in you know a few weeks, but but that's how I feel right now. Um, and I yeah, I would seriously sell Caleb to get Jaden Daniels and change. If, if you could do that, I, I would personally do that. I I, I seriously would. Uh, that's where I'm at, though. But in terms of dynasty rankings, Casey, no, I, I don't look at Caleb like as if he's in a different tier. He's still right there in tier one, at least in dynasty rookie rankings and uh, and overall dynasty rankings as yeah. well. He's still going to be a first round pick and, you know, a, a startup. Yeah. So, all right. Well, let's let's go over to neighbors and Marv. And we don't need to spend a ton of time here because these guys are living up to the hype. Yeah. You know, Marv had the had the week one where not a whole lot of targets. And then since then, he's been in Fuego. And then obviously neighbors has just been um, tremendous. Uh, <laughs> neighbors good. has a is, has a thirty five point two percent target share. Uh, that's number two in the league. Fifty eight percent. Uh, air yard share that's number one in the league his targets per route run are number three his first downs per route run are number 16 his first read percentage is 47.9 which is astronomical is that good yeah his team receiving market share yardage uh, percentage is 45.2 is incredible his yards per route run are 2.49 which is 19th overall and that, like these are overall numbers right uh, so those are those are insane numbers now the thing that you liked about neighbors was that he, regardless, he was, he's the best receiver on the team. They never had anybody like this. They are, they were going to force feed in the ball, whether if he was going to be as good as we think he is, then this was kind of the outcome that you expected. We didn't expect it to maybe be at this level. I think you were probably a hair more bullish on him than me. So, you know, you could go ahead and talk your neighbor shit. You're up, you're up in that Jersey, New York area. So, <laughs> Let's let's hit neighbors for a second. We'll we'll brush over Marv and then we'll talk Rome. So I found this hilarious. We're three weeks in, Casey. He's on pace for 210 targets. I, I love looking at 17 game paces early on. Just it's just fun for me to to run the numbers. The all-time record is Marvin Harrison back in 2002 with 205 targets. So, mm -hmm. like just just for context, like, you know, he's getting hosed, man. I mean, 18 targets week two. He's on pace for north of 1,500 yards. He's ranking, he's ranked first all time in, or, I'm sorry, first in targets with 37 through three games. Hey, dude, he 22.8 points per game. Also first, first in touchdowns. He's not, he's not doing too bad, man. And you know, I think you could say what makes this even more impressive, Casey, he's doing it with Daniel Jones. Okay. It's not me taking a stab at Daniel Jones, but it kind of is so. He's 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 the truth, man. I mean, he's always been tier one for me in my dynasty rankings, rookie rankings. I I, I really view him in God. I, I I really I'm ready to say I'm okay with taking Malik Neighbors over someone like Garrett Wilson in the dynasty startup. Like I, I I really viewed him in that Justin Jefferson type of talent. I I think that this kid is. I think the world of, of Malik neighbors is, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's any, he's insane. I don't think there's any reason to have him, you know, either right outside of tier one or, or moving into tier one already. Right. I mean, he's, he's tier one for, for dynasty wide receivers. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, you know, Garrett Wilson is, I think he's going to continue to, to, to increase and get better, but we're already seeing it from Malik neighbors. Now, if they add more pieces to this offense, 
maybe it gets you know broken up a little bit from how heavy it is right now but even if it got broken up a little bit it's still awesome and and he looks the part already he's handling all of this and crushing uh with those numbers and and you say with daniel jones but i mean i don't really care who the quarterback is at this point like he's just getting peppered with so much you know targets yeah. like you're, you're bound to you know uh get with you especially when you're a talent level at malik neighbors level so i like that and marv uh, Marv's at 24.4% target percentage. That's 16th overall, 45.9% air yard share. That's ninth overall. Yards per route run, 2.18. That's 28th overall. First downs per route run, 36th overall. First read targets, 28.6. That's uh, 25th overall. His receiving market share for the for the yardage for his team is 31%. That's 15th overall. But in his catchable target rate is only at 61.99% uh, there, which is lower than you know, a decent amount of other guys on his team. Now he's obviously getting some more volume than those guys, but that could even go up a hair uh, from some of the catchable targets, according to fantasy data points. Um, and it's a dot 17.7, which is extremely good with, you know, kind of all the volume that's, that's going his way. So Marv was already extremely high. I don't think anybody's moving him down and I don't, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of room to move him up. So I don't want to spend a whole lot of time yeah. talking about Marv and, but you can get a second in here if you want. Yeah, I'll just I'll keep it quick, but you know, he's he's only caught 10 out of 21 targets. So I think that there's clearly a lot of room for improvement between, you know, the chemistry, mm. obviously between Marv and Kyler. And, you know, that will inevitably improve as the season goes on. I mean, the the guys really just haven't played much ball with one another. And right. you know, we're we're again last thing I'll say, Casey. Week two, when Marv went nuclear, right? He put up 30 fantasy points in the first quarter, right? I know, I know he didn't have a, a single catch after that first quarter, but he was the wide receiver one in fantasy that week just from the first quarter. So to do that in week two of your NFL career tells you the type of ceiling that Marv has. Yeah. Oh, for sure. All right, let's go to Rome. You know, Rome's out there doing some work. I think this this week you finally saw it all come to fruition. Some people are were were really worried about Marv or, or Rome three games in. My position on Rome has not changed. I think he's as talented as pretty much those other two guys, Marv and and, and neighbors that we just talked about. And he's going to be tied to Caleb. And like I said, I think Caleb's doing just fine, and and they're going to ascend together. Are you are you have you backed off any Rome? Are you still in on Rome? I mean, I think it'd be silly to have any movement three games in on such a good prospect. But I think you started to see the upside of Rome over this last game kind of starting to percolate. The only thing I can consider moving is uh, Brock Bowers a hair above Rome. If if I think it was, you know, consensus probably had Rome just above Brock. Mm. But if you want to flip-flop them now, I'm okay because Brock is... And we'll get to Brock. Brock. Brock looks special, man. But Rome has been, you know, again, Casey, you said quiet first two weeks, popped off this past week with 112 receiving yards. Now... I got some texts this week from some of my friends and and some of pe some people reached out to me on Twitter and they're just like, I'm nervous about Rome, man. And, and it's hilarious to me that we are eight quarters into his career, two games, and people are panicking. It's like, <laughs> what are we doing, man? When we love a prospect for three years and then they have two poor games, like, do we just throw away the... Th Three years, like, like, what are we doing? I mean, what are we doing, man? People have zero patience in Dynasty. And again, that has to be a mandatory prerequisite to have success in Dynasty. And it's, oh. it, it almost makes me angry to just see, I, I, dude, I got so many DMs. Like, what do I do with Rome? Should, should I sell now? I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Go, 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 go cash in and get a second for Rome. Let me know how that works out for you. R Rome is special, man. He would be the wide receiver one in a lot of classes. It's unfortunate that he was in a stacked class. I know I've said that so many times, but he he's just a very, very good wide receiver. I, I, I'm okay with calling him an elite prospect with just two guys that I think are are better than him. It's yeah, he I, I love Rome. I love Rome. I, I think the world of him. I'm very happy to see him succeed already in week three, Casey. Yeah, no, me, me, me too. Um, yeah, I think I think that he's also banged up. Uh, with a with an MCL issue and and played through uh, week two and and then this this past week, um, but Rome stays neutral for me, um, kind of where he mm -hmm. was going in that third ish round. So I, I'm still okay with that. The, not a, not a big change from Rome, but but not scared at all. And, and he's putting up there his air yard share is first on his team, thirty five point five percent, 
first read targets, 19.7%. Obviously, DJ Moore is leading the team with that. But his catchable target rate's only at 63%. That's the lowest on the team. So those things can move up. His A dot's at 17.5. His, his first down uh, route run is at 0.63, which is, is decent. His target percentage is only at 16.1 right now. So those things, I think, will all increase as time goes on. And I just I love that those two guys, Caleb and Rome, are going to be building together. And again, kind of stays neutral. Uh Um, in that in that third round startup area tight end premium uh for me uh with roman dunes all right let's talk about brock bowers you know some people have already moved him to to tight end one here what's your uh what's your opinion on on brock bowers here i might be some people because Mm, uh dude i i don't know man i i i haven't sat down and done my you know, updated my overall like top 300 dynasty startup rankings. I haven't done that yet, but uh, I did just update my, you know, 2024 Superflex rookie rankings if I were to draft today. And I did move Brock up to the 105. I think I had him at 106. I, I think that's where he was prior. So he moved up one slot. He jumped Rome. Look, uh, Brock has been really 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 good that, that's an understatement man i mean he is he was 0.1 fantasy points away from being the uh tight end one uh, just behind isaiah likely and then goddard went nuclear this week so he's just trailing him now he's looked special man through three weeks uh brock bowers is you know whether it's blocking whether it's receiving uh he, he just he looks like a legitimate veteran already and he looks like a focal point of the Raiders offense I think Minshew's been leaning on him now I don't know if the Raiders are going to have you know Antonio Pierce their head coach mentioned that they could potentially have some type of quarterback change in the near future and I don't doubt that that could happen but I I don't even care if it's AOC I don't I don't care if it's Minshew I I really think Brock Bowers is just going to get it done regardless man he's he's looked like a beast yeah, and you know we talked about neighbors and all of the stuff that he had going on. And number one in a bunch of categories, guys like Rome are dealing with other people on the team that can eat up some target share. Bauer is dealing with a guy like you know Devonte Adams over there, and, and a good receiver yeah. in Jacoby Myers over there. So some of his numbers aren't quite as gaudy, but I mean his targets or his yards per route run four point two point four six. That and with receivers in yeah. there, he's twenty first yeah. in that in that metric. Um, and that's I'm with bad. all of the receivers in the league. So he's right up there. He's 19th in first downs per route run with 0.125 with re- that's not, that's not tight ends. That's receivers and tight ends. Um, a target share of 18% first read targets of 19.7%. Those are, could be higher, but Devonte Adams is on this team. Mm-hmm. Um, his a dots only 5.5. The, uh, his air yard share is 16.9, which is, you know, which is, is fine. Um, you know, and his, his catchable balls are at 90%. So, Getting some some good looks over there. His team uh, receiving yardage market share is twenty three point eight percent. That's thirty six b- for receivers and tight ends. You know he's out there doing work. I was a, the only concern I had was the, how the Raiders were going to use him and uh, w- was their OC equipped to to use him in the right way. And and those questions so far have been answered. You know resoundingly yes. Now this week was a little quiet. Um, that nobody saw them coming in and, and just getting shellacked by the by the Panthers here. Oh, um, yeah. But have you moved him above of Laporta and Kincaid and McBride? Kincaid, yes. Laporta and I think I think it's a real question with with Laporta. Um, to tell you the truth, yeah, I, I would put him above Kincaid and and McBride. Um, it's it, it's a real conversation, Casey. I mean, again, so early into his career. Uh, it's it's just he looked this good as a prospect and it's very reassuring to see him play this well in the NFL as well obviously he got the draft capital high you know high first round pick he's also caught 18 of 20 targets I mean that's kind of crazy man I I, he's he's three for four in contested catch rate 75 percent I mean just everything thrown his way he comes down with uh, he's he's just he's a legitimate weapon, man. I know I know he's a tight end, but he's a weapon. He's the thirteenth overall pick. I just I think that we're seeing exactly what we saw in college. It, it yeah. might be even better, man. He he's yeah. he's awesome. Yeah, it, it translated. He's he's a receiver out there on the field. He can he can get it done. I, I'm I still got Trey McBride up there mm-hmm. uh, with him. I could I could throw them in the same top tier, but I, I, I yeah. I've. I like McBride. McBride's still holding on to 
you know, a lot of those big target share, air yard share, market share might have might have just got banged up this week. Obviously, Marv has entered the fold there, but you know, I, I still have McBride up there with the kind of usage that that he can get and the the amount of volume that he can get. Bowers, I, I view kind of similarly. So I would keep those guys up there, but Bowers has definitely jumped up into the conversation for me where he was outside of there coming into it. I would yeah. have traded Bowers for any of those guys because I'd seen him do it. And now I've seen Bowers do it. Um, and you're, you know, for, for three weeks, but it's it's answered enough questions for me that I'm I knew what the talent was and it, it's translated and the the way to use him seemingly for the Raiders is kind of translated. And and we we maybe even at some point should get an upgrade at quarterback, right? So that would that would be sick. So Brock Bowers to the moon here. All right, let's talk about another guy that you loved, Brian Thomas. Uh, you know, Jags struggling right now, nothing really going well, but leading a lot of categories for his team. Uh, target percentage 17.5, that's leads the team. His air yard share is 22.3, so not quite leading the team there. Uh, first downs per route run, uh, first on the team. Yak per reception, 5.45, first on the team. Yards per route run, 2.22, first on the team. Team receiving market share percentage, 32% leads the team so leading the team in a lot of aspects obviously kirk has had a slow start evan ingram's been banged up and the jags just haven't been producing but brian thomas is the lone bright spot jags scare you uh thoughts on brian thomas here uh austin did you say do the jags scare me yeah like is, yeah, it, is, I, it, is it concerning for your brian thomas shares i guess was a better way to put that uh, no, I mean, no, like yeah, they scare me answer, as a, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> they, they scare me as an NFL team. Uh, last night was one of the worst things I've seen in a while. Yeah, they, make, good. they, uh, they make the Colts look decent, but anyway, uh, Colts have probably found a way to lose to them. But, uh, BTJ, man, he's he looks Casey. I don't even mean to sound repetitive, I feel like I'm just gassing up all these rookies, but this 2024 class is. They've been awesome. We've seen this for like three years in a row, man. We've had some of these top guys all be so good, right? It's great. I mean, this is like actually what what we were hoping for. I feel like it's exceeding our expectations, man. I mean, BTJ ranks first in the NFL in route win. Sorry, that was through the first two weeks. I have to go back and check for week three. But through the first two weeks, he was first in the NFL in route win rate at 92.9%. He, you know, and, and again, this is through two weeks. I'm sorry. This this is a tweet that I put out. This is a little outdated, but he was he was the wide receiver 26 in fantasy points at that point, but 61st in targets. Okay, so he's been ridiculously efficient. And sure, Trevor Lawrence, man, he's been to say he's been struggling would would be yeah. it would just be a lot. The whole team's right? a mess. He, yeah, yeah. You know? So, uh, but yeah, he, BTJ ninth in target separation, 2.75. Uh, he's, you know, whether it's the size, the draft capital, uh, and now we're seeing not only the collegiate production, but the NFL production, man. I mean, he's crushing in yards per target, fourth, sixth in fantasy points per target, eighth in yards per reception. Uh, he, Casey, is it too early to say three games in that Brian Thomas Jr. truly looks like the Jacksonville Jaguars wide receiver one already? Is I mean, last night you, say you saw you saw Kirk kind of come yeah. come to life, and we've been kind of waiting for it. It just hasn't happened. But you, mm-hmm. what you, what I expected was Brian Thomas to act like the wide receiver one, and Kirk to put up the wide receiver one numbers in that offense. Yep. But I think, all intents and purposes, Brian Thomas looks like looks like and is putting up the the wide receiver one numbers. Um, how about T. Higgins or Brian Thomas? Uh, Brian Thomas Jr. 100 confidently. Okay. Mm-hmm. How about DK Metcalf for Brian Thomas? DK. Okay. I'm not. I'm. I'm bullish. I, DK is a <laughs> damn crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not that crazy. DK is a damn good wide receiver. George Pickens. Okay. Like I think that's. I think that's a very good question. Oh man, I think I think I want to go BTJ. That's a good question, Casey. Mm. All right. All right. Let's keep it moving because we're running out of time here. I'm going to I'm going to hit a little lad McConkey here and then we'll talk mm-hmm. about we definitely got to get a little Braylon Allen in because I know you, that was your boy. Shout out to you. And we'll talk a little Bucky Irving and then we'll try to get out of here. But we did a show last night. We we talked about stats you need to know. And lad McConkey was popping up all over these stats. His target share percentage is 24.8 percent. That was 14th. His uh, yards per route run point one two five. That's good for 18th overall. His first read target percentage, 28.9, is 23rd overall. His team market share yardage percentage is 
point eight percent, thirty two overall targets per route run, one point nine five. He's just popping up on a bunch of you know high end stats that that make you say, oh, this this guy's performing, or at least has the ability to be in the discussion to be one of the good receivers in the league that that, that you really value. But we're just, you know, he's got a hurt quarterback and he's had a hurt quarterback since they started. And now he's even a little more hurt. And and we know that the the Chargers came in wanting to be a little bit more of a run first team. Um, But Lad McConkey not necessarily dominating, filling up the stat sheet per se, but all the the major kind of analytical indicators say that Lad McConkey can be a thing if he could if if he had healthy quarterback play and was being allowed the opportunity a little bit more to flourish and we've seen bits and pieces of it we just haven't seen it all put together so lad mcconkey for me it all it feels really good it hasn't come to fruition which you know you weren't sure how really it was going to start off for him anyway and then you had herbert injured before the season even started injured coming into the season shell of himself right now and then coming out there versus Steelers gets hurt i'm still really excited for lad mcconkey i think he's got a big bright future in this league and on this team um, shout out to Quentin Johnston, who's who's doing some work. This yeah. is why we got to have patience, right? This is why we yeah. don't just throw everything in the trash. When that when that stock goes down, you you come in and buy. When 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 Quentin Johnson was going in the 14th round, that's when you buy back in, right? Don't don't just sell for a fourth because he's you think he stinks. He's never going to be good. Just patience, baby, patience. The regime that came out sucked. The regime that came in is awesome. It's there's a lot of confidence. They're going to build everybody up. And I love where we're at moving forward. I just wish Justin Herbert was healthy for this team. So give me your quick thoughts on, on Lad McConkey, and we'll get to your guy, uh, Braylon Allen. Yeah, I'll just say one thing about Lad. We always knew that he could separate. We always knew that he could get open. And it's cool to, uh, you know, the metrics reflect exactly that. In week three, Lad ranked third in the NFL in the average separation score. So at point three, I mean, La- that, Lad is. What's that stat called? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. I can't say it on here. I'm gonna kind of an fine. ass man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not wrong, but uh, La- yeah, Thanks, Lad's man. Lad's uh Lad's getting the job done, man. He's uh, he looks good. He looks good. QJ, Casey, you nailed it. K- QJ looks like a hell of a ROI if he bought low. Hmm. But uh, I I, lo- I really really like what the chargers are doing right now, especially on offense. So uh, who do yeah. you, who, who do you want to pivot to? Let's uh, we are running out of time here, but I definitely wanted to get in Braylon Allen because mm-hmm. we, we had some rankings before the in, in season and went through it. And, and we both kind of like Braylon Allen, you more so than me. And then goes fourth round of the jets behind Brees hall. And for me, it was just like, you know, it's an easy way to push somebody down your rankings. Cause some people have to fall and some people have to rise. And I was really only interested if I had Brees, but boy, oh boy, has this guy looked, you know, the part coming over here and just gives the the Jets a whole new dimension to their offense. Some people are, you know, this is this is the effect of fantasy in a nutshell and mm-hmm. why I think the fantasy guys are always a little bit uh, in, in the sports media realm kind of shunned a little bit because now all of a sudden he's taking Brees Hall's job like, bro, Brees Hall is fucking awesome. This is great that they have another guy out there that can do the kind of things that Braylon Allen's doing right now. Brees Hall's their fucking second best, or if not their best wide receiver on that fucking team. Yeah. I don't care. Brees is going to get 15 touches a game. We're we're good, and and he's going to catch a bunch of balls. He's going to catch. He's going to have five targets to get. We're okay. It's nice for Braylon Allen to come in there, give him a change of pace, and give him some different things. So, talk your Braylon Allen shit. I, you know, I, hopefully, you have a ton of them, and and he's excited. You know, he he's been really really exciting. Uh, to watch. Yeah, I mean, 8.0 yards per carry week one, 4.7 in week two, 5.0 week three. He just had a season high 14 opportunities in week three, Casey. Okay, that's like almost a little too much where if I'm a Brees Hall owner, I'm just like, I'm like, come on, man. Like, like, what are you doing? Like, I, I know we always have these RB2 on roster, RB2s on rosters that are, you know, well, this a, is, cha- a change of pace yeah, or a well, breather back. And he's he's getting even more work than that. And, and I'm not I'm not worried at all about Brees Hall. He's still my dynasty running back one or, or two at worst. Yeah. Uh, but but Braylon Allen, it, dude, I, I'll just tell you, I'll just tell you what, man, for NFL purposes, the Jets have the best one two punch. What they were envisioning with Dalvin Cook last year, that is actually come to fruition this year with Brees Hall and Braylon Allen. 
Yeah, I just, uh, what, I guess part of the point I missed there was just the, that it's always the guy behind the, the guy that is is always so good. And it's like, no, he he is, he's he looks mm-hmm. good, but let's just pump the brakes of how good Brees is very good and he's not going anywhere unless they have an injury. But yeah, <clears throat> there's almost no team in the league who has a guy who's just going to be out there the ridiculous amount. And I think it's great for Brees long term here to yeah. have a guy like that that you can have and trust. And, and he's 20 years old, right? Um, yeah, his so, his entire rookie campaign, twenty years old. Yeah, he's the fourth youngest player in, in NFL history. So, what do you do with a guy like Braylon Allen now that you have him on your team? Is it just a wait and hold and see, or do you are you trying to sell him to the Brees Hall owner and extort a little bit, or are you just hanging out? And obviously, nobody wants an injury to happen, but if an injury did happen, you're just sitting there plug and play or a trade away for a ransom. What what are your thoughts there with that? Maybe I'm crazy, man. I, my gut tells me I don't even want to sell, man. I don't think this is a fluke because we saw him rep- replicate this year after year after year at Wisconsin and dominate at 17, at 18, at 19 years old. I, he was, you know, hitting north of 1,200 rushing yards annually, uh, and and now we're just seeing it again in the NFL. Um, now, I, I don't know, man. I I don't know if you could go get. A first in 2025. I I don't know if that's possible, but it's something to think about. But if you wanted to just hold and uh, throw them in your flex every week, I feel like you could definitely do that and still get some decent production out of him. I mean, again, 14 opportunities in just week three. I'm not saying like that number is going to continue to go up, but it's gone up each week. Um, I feel like this is probably close to his ceiling in terms of volume. But if there's ever an injury with Brees Hall, I mean, dude, he's probably a top 10, top 12 running back every single week, set it and forget it. So I I have nothing but positive things to say about Braylon Allen. He's been a phenomenal ROI so far for everybody. Yeah, I I just hold and dangle that carrot in front of Mm -hmm. anybody who 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 might want him or need him and just and just hang and hold on tight. And then if you you know, like you said, if you need him, I think he has some some flex appeal, especially in like a deeper, bigger league. So. I don't hate that at all, but shout out to, to you and Braylon Allen and all the people who love Braylon Allen. All right, let's let's go to Bucky Irving and we'll we'll wrap it up there. Okay. Um yep. this is a guy who's moving in seemingly on a job from week to week. Now has the the snap share percentage maybe hasn't quite overlapped and really taken over, but if you've been watching each week, Bucky's been just kind of, you know, incrementally seemingly creeping in on this job. Uh, so give me your thoughts on Bucky Irving through three weeks, Austin. Yeah. And I mean, real quick, got- before you before you get started, I'm going to just throw away an Austin quote. You love to see it from Braylon <laughs> Allen. So, yeah. All right. You Bucky do, Irving. Man. You <laughs> do. You're absolutely right. Um, but yeah. 56% of rush attempts this past week, Bucky Irving received from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Man, if, if you sit down and you watch the game, and and this is coming from a Rashad White truther. I really like Rashad White, and uh, I, I like I've been right. I've definitely been on the right side of history with Rashad White in the past. I still really liked him coming into this year, so I could probably take that L. I'll just say like Buffy, Bucky looks like the better running back on the roster right now. Uh, he looks more explosive. Uh, he he just looks like a better pass blocker. I just think he looks like the better player. I think he gives them a better chance to win right now. And I'm not even overreacting after three weeks. I uh, Rashad White, you know, who's always been inefficient, is like at a new level of inefficient. And it's it's almost impressive that I'm like, you know, it's it's just a matter of time before he uh, has a little bit higher yards per carry. And you, again, just more efficient as a rusher. And it's just not trending that way. Things are not looking good. If you own Rashad White, man, I don't even think, I don't even recommend selling. Like just hold and hopefully things get better because right now you're, you're just getting nothing for him. Yeah, so we, I would probably, sorry, go yeah, on. No, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, if I own Rashad White in Dynasty, I'm I'm probably just holding and riding it out, man. Even though it's ugly, I might just throw him on my bench and figure it out, pivot elsewhere. But uh, Bucky Irving, man, it, it looks like there's a, there's a... Todd Bowles, the head coach, just said mm. he's going to get more volume. He's going to get more work this upcoming yeah. week. So, so we'll, we'll see what happens. And he should. He should. Yeah. He's earned it. 
Yeah. We just did a show last night and I was like, hey, I, I might be trying to just sell right now for Rashad White until because I, I feel like mm -hmm. he's a great receiving back. And I don't you know, and I've always loved that about him, but he's been inefficient and I don't love him. The volume was just essentially, I think, going to evaporate at some point with somebody else coming in there that was good. And I think we're going to start seeing it a little bit right now. You're currently at a 74 to 32 percent snap share split here in this back backfield. And I think that's going to start drawing closer to you know, the snaps going closer to 60, 40 to 55, 40, you know, I think we're going to get closer and closer. And then I, I, I said this kind of quoted the same tweet from Jacob Gibbs last night, yards per rush, Bucky Irving, 6.2 Rashad white, 2.1. <laughs> it's crazy. Yards per rush up the middle, Bucky 7.3 white, 1.9 success, success rate, 44% Bucky, 22% white. Avoided tackle rate, 33% Bucky, 19% White. Explosive runs, 10 yards or more, 16% for Bucky, 3% for White. It's just, it's not going well for you. So, I, like, I, I would try to sell, like, mm -hmm. sell a hair low. We were talking about if you could still salvage multiple twos or a two and, like, an escalator player that could, elevator player, however you want to say it, you know, a little bit lower end guy who could really explode. I would take it and and run for the hills, I think, with with my... Rashad White's here. I don't even know if you could get that type of return. My yeah. gut tells me well, you yesterday can't. on the Just Dynasty Daddy. I support that. Yesterday on the Dynasty Daddy website, you that we that's where we kind of found some truth. We were looking at them yep. that happened yesterday. So there was still okay. some meat on the bone potentially. I mean, that's not every leak, so you can't. You know, yeah. it is what it is. That I could send that out. In my we talked about it in the beginning of the season when we were coming into the season, like that Rashad White, Pacheco, Cook area in the draft. Those guys were hard. Maybe Cook was a little, but those were hard guys to even get a first from coming into the season. So their value was a little tentative in, in some leagues, not every league. And now it's, I think it's just gotten worse for yeah. Rashad White at this point. And I'm not saying that he's going to be irrelevant. He's an excellent receiving back and that he should be treated as so. And I, you know, I just, Bucky's coming, I feel like. Yeah. And I think it was like maybe the smaller frame that deterred people, you know, initially deterred people like 5'10, you know, just sub 200 pounds but our williams baby yeah right right i mean we're starting to see it more and more Slow. um you know yeah correct that In definitely that, neg yeah. that negatively impacted his his uh draft capital uh, at least i think that played a you know a vital role in that uh, I mean, but look, like Bucky, just under sixteen hundred rush, uh, sixteen hundred yards, thirteen touchdowns last year. Like, like ridiculous production. We really, really liked him out of Oregon, and he was first in college football amongst all running backs in receptions at fifty six. So, I mean, people like to see that twenty yeah. reception Under, underrated he, receiver. I think so good, so good as a wide receiver. I know Rashad White is as well. Rashad White yeah. is an awesome wide receiver. Uh, yeah. pass catching back but I just wanted to throw that in there that uh, you know his again awesome collegiate production and and it's it's just good to see him succeed at such an early stage in, in his NFL career so I, I love Bucky I'm rooting for him man good for good for the Bucks man I think that they they crushed this day three pick I think they crushed it yeah I agree I agree all right we got to wrap up I want to I want to throw one more guy in here just as it was we're going out honorable mention here Eric all has been getting some good run for the Bengals and looking decent doing so. I believe his targets per route run are up there uh, with like fourth in the league right now. Um, and the the Bengals, I believe, are going through a bit of a renaissance in how they run their offense. They used to be the three is hot, the hot, the, the excuse me. They used to be the highest three wide receiver set team in the league and they've, they've changed OCs. Now I think you're getting more tight end combinations in there. You know, Gusecki's look good. Uh, Hudson's look good when he's in there, but Eric all is a young, young rookie out of, out of, uh, out of Michigan. Uh, and you know, was, was kind of skipped over in a lot of draft processes, ours included, but has looked good out there. So just monitor him, throw him in some trades. If you can on the bottom of some trades to get some, you know, you don't want to go target a guy like that. Maybe, uh, just specifically and blow your cover maybe on him. Uh, but I think you might be able to broker some deals with Eric all in it and kind of see where that goes uh, tied to Joe Burrow for for a long time. So um, anything else before we get out of here, Austin? No, man, let's call it. This has been fun. This, this was yeah. a good episode. Yeah, loved it, man. You, good good stuff. As always, be sure to go check out Fade Consensus from Austin. You go in two episodes a week? Uh, I'm doing one episode every, every week. I do a weekly recap on the podcast. So, But I appreciate right. that, Casey. Be sure to go check that out. If you're not already following on Twitter, you got to go check out Austin Abbott. It's Austin Abbott FF, correct? Yep. Two Bs, two Ts, two Fs. 
Uh, guys crushing it over there. A lot of good information. If you're not following us, go follow us at the FF Dynasty. Not a whole lot of great information coming out over there, but uh, keep you abreast <laughs> of what we're up to. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Five-star review if you're listening on the pod. Sub if you're listening on the YouTubes. Hit us in the comments below with how dumb we are and stupid takes and or what you loved. And, and we'll be doing more rookie reports. We're going to do – we'll probably re-mock these guys here at some point soon. Maybe we'll throw out some re-rookie rankings some point soon. We got 25 guys. We, we, we need to do the quarterbacks. And then maybe we'll do a way too early 25 rookie mock. Oh, Austin, how about them? I'm down, man. I'm never going to say no to rookie content. He's always down. All right, man. That's why I love you. You got to love it. We'll see you next time. Peace.